I want Super Sage Northcott. I think that boy's corny. I want to punch his spikes out of his hair. So I asked him. Why do you think Sage is corny? It's just corny when he lands and he goes, like he does that stupid like, uh, like it's, I, I don't know, man. It just goes along with his corny. Why was Sage Northcutt the, the choice of who you want to call out afterwards? That's a, that's a, that's a hot fight. That's a fun fight. Uh, you know, I, I, we're both Dana White looking for the fight guys. Um, I, think, I think it'd be a fun fight, man. Uh, I really do. I think that'd be, you know, it, it would test me. And I, I know I'd test him. This is big. You're mine with Blanco and Blanco. All right, we're here to talk about something very interesting. Mickey Gall actually calling out Sage Northcutt. Blanco, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are these are two newcomers coming into the UFC. They both originated from looking for a fight on YouTube. With Dana White. With Dana White, a very, very popular series. Very, very good, actually. Now, both of these fighters are very young. Mm -hmm. Both of them have good records. They do, and let me tell you about the record since you got there with Mickey Gall. Actually in the UFC being 3-0. Very interesting thing about Sage this fight. Orca is 3-1 in the UFC. He's 3-1 in the UFC. Mickey Gall has not lost, and all three of his victories came within the first round. All the same way, rear naked choke. His most recent one against CM Punk. CM Punk went into the eye and left with cauliflower ears. Block him. Alright, so my thoughts on this is I honestly think that Sage Northcutt has more experience than him. Mm -hmm. To be completely honest. Now, Mickey Gall is a world class Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artist. He's great on the ground, he's a brown belt, um, working his way into a black belt. But we are talking about a, a guy, Sage Norco, who just looks like a freak of nature. He looks like he was created from the Dragon Ball gods. Like, Broly came down, Goku came down, and all of those motherfuckers just had a kid and made it into someone in our real universe, and that was Sage Norco. He's saying he got Super Saiyan here. Exactly. But what I'm saying here is that Mickey Gall, realistically, Blanco, if we really put all of this into perspective here, he hasn't really, the last guy he beat was a man who's never fought in the octagon, which is, exactly. you know, how credible are you as of this point? Now, you may be talented, you may be undefeated, the third fight in the UFC and winning each single way. In regards to credibility, does that play a factor when he goes into the fight here? Yes, honestly, and this is why, because the thing is, is yeah, Mickey Gall is good at what he does, but we are talking about Sage Northcutt, a guy who who has legitimate experience, who is legit on the stand-up. He's not gonna be like CM Punk, walking forth with his hands so fucking high that it's so easy for a takedown. How did he lose that one fight? Um, he, he actually lost by submission. All right, now that's interesting because the guy that he's going against, Mickey Gall, all of his victories are by submission. Now they're both. It wasn't a rear naked choke though. It was. It was still a submission. But it wasn't a rear naked choke. It doesn't have to be a rear naked choke because when it goes into the winning column, it says submission by victory. Regardless, the only point that I'm trying to make, Blanco, is that Mickey Gall's opponent, the only time that he's lost was to a submission. So can it play out that way in regards to Mickey Gall? Would it be considered an upset? This is what I'm gonna say. I don't think if either of these fighters win, it's gonna be an upset. I think if both of these fighters fight, then it's not gonna be like a two to one underdog or anything like that. I think it's gonna be a pretty even uh, fight when it comes down to uh, the actual odds. Right. So this is what I say. If we're gonna choose on who's gonna win this fight, I honestly believe uh, Super Sage Northcutt wins this fight. The reason being is because he's just athletically gifted. He's good on the stand up. In UFC 200, because a lot of people were discrediting Sage Northcutt when he did tap out, um, saying that you know he was just never put in that position and he just sort of gave up. In UFC 200, he got put into a crazy armbar, crazy armbar that could have easily broken both of our arms at the same damn time. So this guy clearly has learned, you know, how to dive the submission on the ground. He knows how it feels to be put in a tight position to where maybe I should tap, maybe I shouldn't. Let me just fight through it. So honestly, I think Sage Northcutt takes it, and I believe I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. It depends what fight this is. So it hasn't been confirmed yet. We just know that this fight is going to end up happening. Sage wants it, Mickey Gall wants it. If this is a main event, I'm gonna call it a fourth round knockout 
for Sage Norka. I think he knocks him out in the fourth round. If we are talking about a three round fight, I think Sage Norka knocks him out in the second round. All right, that's fair to have that opinion. Yeah. Again, both of these fighters, they're pretty much new into the UFC, yeah. so I'm just gonna play the devil's advocate in regards to this. It could go either way, realistically, but, you know, one of these fighters have a loss, so we know what he suspects to losing to, what his weaknesses are. Now, the other fighter is undefeated, but he hasn't fought credible enough opponents that are known, really, to be of an elite competition. However, I think that uh, Mickey Gall has a lot of confidence. Uh, mind you, he, he's fought before the UFC. Uh, I believe in total he has about six wins uh, and only one of them uh, was by decision. So at the end of the day, when you're a fighter that has not experienced the taste of a loss of defeat, you kind of feel like you're on top of the world. Everything just seems like it's falling into place. I mean, the kid looked good. CM Punk, not for nothing. You know, he had a whole show about him. He couldn't really even get two punches off on the kid, and the kid kept him on the ground. He didn't get one punch off. Not even one punch. So I'm gonna call it like this, Blanco. I think Mickey Gall is gonna keep riding this wave that he's on. Whatever that may be, he's a young kid, he's growing within the sport, and he has, you know, I bet there's a little bit of ego there. He's going to go ahead and uh, win the fight, and I also believe that it can happen by submission, and I'm calling it first round. First round, even if it's five rounds, and even if it's three rounds. If round. it's five rounds, it's going to be a submission in the first round. If it's three rounds, it's going to be a submission in the first round. That's just my thoughts on it. Let us know what you think. Like, As always, go ahead and leave a comment down below on what you guys think. Who's the better fighter? Who's going to win? Like the video. Make sure to share the video with anybody that you know. And as always, thumbs up like a hitchhiker. Speak your mind. Blanco. Blanco. That's